Hi, Sarah here from smallbusinesssarah.com, and today I have some exciting news for all of you Etsy sellers. QuickBooks Online has just released a new integration that combines any version of QuickBooks Online with your Etsy shop. So now in real time, all of your Etsy sales and fees can be automatically brought over to QuickBooks with a simple integration. I have been testing this new program, this new integration with several clients and I just love it. So I'm going to show you in this video how to set it up and how to use it. If you don't have QuickBooks Online, there is a link down below in the description where you can get your hands on QuickBooks Online. In my opinion, this now makes QuickBooks Online for sure the hands down best choice for doing your Etsy shop bookkeeping, but that is just my opinion. All right, let's get started so you can get this integration all set up between your QuickBooks Online account and your Etsy shop. First, I'm gonna walk you through this setup, which is super simple and easy. First of all, when you're logged into your QuickBooks Online account, you're gonna go to the left sidebar where it says Apps, and you're gonna search for Sync with Etsy. And you can see my big circle there showing you which app that you want or which integration. Um, you'll notice here that the developer is into it themselves, and I really think they made a superior product um, in this case. So just click the button to get the app now. Then we're going to go ahead and connect the Sync with Etsy app to your Etsy shop. Right now, Sync with Etsy is only able to be connected to one Etsy shop at a time. So choose the Etsy shop with the most activity. Um, and also, I should have mentioned this in the introduction, this Sync with Etsy app is absolutely free. So that is a wonderful, wonderful thing about this integration. Also, right now, it's only available for U.S. sellers, but I think Intuit is planning to add international at some point as well. So just go ahead and click Connect. Then you're going to sign into your Etsy account just like you normally would. And then once you're all signed in, it's going to tell you what you're signed in as and you're going to allow them access. And they say, welcome to Sync with Etsy. It's reiterating what I said. It's only U.S. based Etsy shops right now. Um, and right now it does not bring in customer information or track inventory, but that is just fine. We're going to hit OK, let's go. So now we need to tell Sync with Etsy what accounts in QuickBooks our deposits go to and what account our charges go to. So in the first instance, the deposits most likely go to one of your checking accounts. So um, because that integration, the app is now connected to QuickBooks, it's bringing up your actual bank accounts from your QuickBooks file. So find the bank account that you are using for your Etsy deposits and select that from the drop down menu. Next, find where your charges go to. Um, so this is when your account goes negative on Etsy, maybe from advertising costs or refunds or something like that. And Etsy has to charge your financial account to get you back up to zero. So for some of you, this could also be your business checking account. And for others of you, it'll be a credit card. So you'll need to determine that from Etsy. And I can show you where in a, in a minute. And then select that. Next, you're going to choose a start date for importing all the transactions from Etsy into QuickBooks. You can go as far back as January 1st of 2020. In my case, I chose January 1st of 2021 for my Etsy integration to start. And then we'll hit save. And it starts doing its work. And we say, OK, it's going to take a little bit of time for everything to be brought into QuickBooks Online. As I mentioned before, I was going to show you where to find where those charges might come through. And right now I'm in finances 
on the payment account and you'll see that my billing card is listed right there and then the deposits list the bank account. Okay, I'm in QuickBooks Online. I've gone to my banking tab and selected my checking account where my Etsy deposits land. And I do have two Etsy shops, each just doing a small amount of activity each month. So let's go through this. Now, early on, let's start with this February 17th deposit. This is for the Etsy shop that I connected. And when I look in the categories, I find that QuickBooks has created a new category called Etsy Small Business Sarah, and the type is a bank account. If you are familiar at all with my method of Etsy bookkeeping, this whole system is very similar to how I was doing things before. It's just in real time now because of the integration. So some of these early deposits, I'm going to categorize to this account. These are deposits that happened prior to the integration. So I did not connect my QuickBooks Online account to the Sync with Etsy app until a couple weeks ago. So these February deposits happened prior to the integration. So I just want to make sure I select that correct account to use for the categorization and I'm going to go ahead and click add. Now these three little tiny drips and drabs of deposits are actually related to my other Etsy shop. So instead of categorizing it to this new category that QuickBooks created for me, I'm going to stick with my old method for this shop and um, follow the card in the upper right hand corner for information on that method and also a link in the description. So I'm going to categorize these to Etsy Bank and I'll keep handling that second shop with my old method. So I'm going to click add and add. Now finally we have a deposit from Etsy that looks a little bit different. Um, instead of us having to choose the category, it's giving us the option to match. That's because now that the integration has been set up and running, QuickBooks is now bringing in those deposits from Etsy and it's recognizing them and now we can simply match it. So that makes things a lot easier um, on the bank feed categorization side. Once you get rolling, you're simply going to just click match each month. Now let's take a look at what this all looks like in that, that new Etsy bank that QuickBooks created for us. We're gonna take a look at the register. So let's come down here to bank register. I've selected that new account that QuickBooks created for me at the top, this new Etsy uh, bank register. And now I can see all of the activity. And let's go to Etsy and compare the activity from one to the other. I started running some Etsy ads because I was trying to get my shop to go negative so that I could show you the charge in QuickBooks, but it hasn't come through yet. So let's, let's compare what's happening here. This is, once again, finances shop payment account for Etsy, and we'll go back and forth and see what's happening. So you'll notice that right away I've got charges for advertising and QuickBooks has created all of these accounts for me. I didn't need to do that. So we've got Etsy shop fees advertising and that's the expense account that this is going to. So we've got 89 cents, 99 cents and two one dollar charges. And that agrees with exactly what is happening right here in Etsy. You'll also notice that my running balance in here agrees to my running balance in Etsy. So we have a 
ongoing picture of how much money we have sitting at Etsy. So right now mine's negative because I'm going to owe them 218 if I don't make a sale. Um, but hopefully most of the time that's a positive number. So you can make sure that everything's working correctly by comparing these two. Now you may need to start with the beginning balance in this account. And I'm going to cover that in a separate video so that this video does not get too long. So um, be patient. That will be coming out soon. Um, covering how to make sure you start with the right beginning balance in this new Etsy um, bank account that QuickBooks has created for us for this sync with Etsy integration. Um, let's continue. Uh, now we have transaction fees, listing fees, and a sale. The sale of $6 is less 43 cents order processing fee. So my Etsy bank balance only increased by $5.57. So let's see what the register reflects. Here we have the order, and there is the listing fee and the transaction fee. Now, you might notice that things are in a slightly different order. So we've got the 30 cents, then the 20 cents, then the sale. And over here in Etsy, we have the 20 cents, then the sale, then the 30 cents. It all manages to get in there, but so don't let the order of things confuse you. And that could be one reason why, you know, if you have a lot of activity, it might be a touch difficult to tie to the, you know, penny back and forth with Etsy, the balance, just because things are reported in here in a slightly different order. So just keep that in mind. Now let's take a look at the order details. Because if you followed my method before, one problem with just recording Etsy deposits straight to an Etsy sales account is the fact that there are fees mixed in and we have to separate them out. And all of these fees are being separated out. But what about that order processing fee? We can see the sale. Somebody bought my Etsy seller's simple guide to taxes ebook. And then here we have the payment fee, the order processing fee broken out separately. So that is accounted for as well. And there you have it. It's basically all of the detail. Anything that has happened in the payment account is now being brought over to QuickBooks in this Etsy bank register and it's being recorded. We've got our sales are being broken out. If you have discounts, that will be broken out separately. If you have refunds, that will be broken out separately. And then all of the different various fees. So now let's go ahead and look at how this information will look in your financial statements. So we're gonna run some financial statements, a balance sheet and a profit and loss statement from the report section of QuickBooks. Okay, here is our profit and loss for January of 2021. And you'll see, once again, this is an account that QuickBooks has created for me. We have our Etsy shop sales and our product income for a total of $28. And as I just said, if there's discounts, that will be broken out separately. If there's refunds, that will be broken out separately. So that is fantastic. We come down here to expenses and we have our Etsy shop fees and everything is also broken out. Advertising, listing, merchant fees, transaction fees. So merchant fees would be order processing fee. If you have shipping labels, that will be broken out separately as well down here. So this is exactly how it should be. Once again, if you're familiar with my method, this is how your profit and loss statements look as well, which is how we want them. And finally, we have the balance sheet. Um, as of January 31st, we had a balance of $26.53. And that second line is the other Etsy bank account. I haven't finished uh, posting my journal entries for that account, so that's why it's negative. Um, but you'll see that we have, since I have two Etsy shops, I've got two separate Etsy bank balances, but they both appear up here um, with our other balances, cash balances. And that's because this money that is sitting um, at Etsy is our, is our money. Um, 
we're just waiting for Etsy to make the deposit to our account, which happens most likely every week for most people. So that's all there is to it. Adding the Sync with Etsy integration is super simple. And once you have added the integration, all of the details that you need from your Etsy shop finances are being brought into QuickBooks Online automatically for you. And it is a wonderful, seamless process. Um, as I mentioned, I'm going to be doing a second video um, and I will definitely cover the beginning balance information and a few other odds and ends. So if you end up having questions about this new Sync with Etsy app, um, you might want to check that second video first and see if I've answered the question there. All right, I hope you are as excited about Sync with Etsy as I am. It is a great solution and it's free. I highly recommend it. And I hope you check it out and enjoy it as well.